what's going on? I decided to go ahead and make this video of the top five hardest red pills, me personally, that I had to swallow. Through this journey, there's been all kind of red pills, you know, you small things, big things, but these are like, in other words, I've swallowed these pills and to this day, every now and then I do have aftershocks of real red pill rage on some of these topics that I'm about to say. So here's my top five hardest red pills that I had to swallow. Number five is consumerism. My oh my, will we fucking lie to? Think about this, consumerism. Placing the worth of who you are, what you are, as a person, according to the things that you can afford to buy. You could maybe have the cure for cancer, but if you don't have on the best clothes, if you're not driving the nicest car, if you don't live in the biggest house, you're not worth a shit. That there alone was a major, major awakening. I was always kind of on the cheap side most of my life, but I did have my times where when I was a lot younger, I used to kind of indulge in a lot of consumerism to, you know, yeah, sometimes to may imp impress people buying like these expensive shoes and clothes, but I, I got out of that phase very quick. And I never knew that this was a society, societal game that was being played on everybody. Like, basically, no matter what you do, no matter what you are, no matter how many languages you speak, you're not really worth shit unless you drive like this BMW, a Lexus, or you have like a nice house and all these little status symbols. So that was number five. That was that was a major, major uh, red pill. Number four, gynocentrism. I never knew how bad and bias the Western world was towards men at the sake of women. You look on YouTube, documentaries, uh, Divorce Corp is one. I recommend you guys go check it out. They got them on, it's on Netflix. I've seen it up close and personal with the divorce my mom did with my dad. I'm going to make another video on that in more detail to show you how fucked up that was. But I started really, really noticing that the society will pretty much drown men under the Atlantic at the expense of uplifting women or doing favors for women. That was a hard pill to swallow because basically gynocentrism really shows you if you're a man that you know, this society isn't for you. This society doesn't really give a fuck about you. What they do care about is how much they need you to produce because you are the fuel of gynocentrism. Gynocentrism doesn't exist if guys are not the fodder of this system. So you have to be the disposable ones in order for the system to work. That hit me the hardest. Also, that, that when I see gynocentrism every now and then, I get some aftershocks from it. Number three, most men are simps, including your friends. How many guys have said the same thing? They've lost friends since high school. Uh, I had one over 20 years. We were... We were 20 years and two divorces. And each time, once he gets up under the wing of the of, of, of a woman or a wife, of course, the friendship gets pretty much demolished. 
I don't know what it is with women. I guess this is a part of the tactic that they do to alienate guys from their friends. But most of the time, uh, the friends, especially the closest friends, are the first ones to go. And that's a real simp move by any man. I have never, even in my days where I wasn't really red pill aware, I've never put any woman, any relationship, or any girlfriend over my friends because I did understand that friendships, sometimes those things can last a lifetime. Women don't. Women don't last a lifetime. So that was kind of hard too. You know, you, you, you ever go to parties and you can see it. Uh, you know, guys are getting along. Everybody's fine until you get these women around. All of a sudden, they start acting weird, a little distant, combative. They want to compete a little more. And it's like, come on, man. Like, we, we, we're friends. We boys. There's no need to go through all that. But that was a major, major, major awakening to see how men change and turn the simps for women at the expense of men again. So once again, we get the boot. Number two, <laughs> religion. Religion, religion, religion. That one hit me hard. A lot of time, religion is told to you very early and is practiced throughout your life. Some people have in the you know an epiphany and they decide, well, this relig this type of religion isn't for me, and they are go and find another one. But for most most of the part, your religion is pretty much told to you uh, at a young age, and it's practiced most of the time, forced practice throughout the duration of your your adolescence into you being a young person into an adult, and a lot of times we carry that with us, and a red pill to that is, I mean, it's a lot of holes in religion. A lot of it just doesn't make sense. A lot of the moral grounds that religion does have, I think that it does benefit a lot of society of people do uphold those values. But for the most part, you know, if it's one God, why we have so many religions? It's just, I could go on and on. But it's a lot of holes. I've seen Christian people argue with Baptists. I've seen Baptists argue with Muslims the whole nine yard. And you see the way they act once, you know, defending like an ideology that they were raised with. And to see them all go at each other's throat, but then swear up and down they're worshiping the same God. It just didn't make any sense. That was a real tough red pill, uh, especially if you study certain evolutionary points, you listen to scientists and all these different things, It that, that, that there really gets you. The religion part really gets you. Because sometimes, a lot of times that becomes your way of life. You know, it becomes a part of your being. It becomes a part of a personality. And for them to tell you or you to see like, man, it is a possibility that a lot of this could be bullshit was a tough red pill to swallow. That was a tough one. That was a tough one. Uh, I'm not here to argue about that. I'm quite sure a, a lot of people have questioned a lot of these things that were taught to them, especially living in the information era. A lot of people have questioned a lot of things and the red pill alone in religion is just finally having to question it. I never questioned it before because like I said, it's given to you at birth and it's practiced through your life. So that was a harsh one. N number one, is a walk. All women are like that, including your mother. 
All women are like that, including your mother. That was one of the hard, that, on my list, that was number one. That one pretty much tells you half of the population and a gender all your life that you were told if you be nice to her, if you love her, if you do this, if you do that, all of these things, this is what she would be in return. And when you find out that women biologically just can't love men and you start to look at it on a more biological standpoint, you will see women, they can't. They can't. Her love is only as deep as your willingness to provide. Her love is deep, just as deep as your pockets. Of course, if you're a millionaire and you're a half decent guy, she's going to love you to death. But what would happen if you were broke? What happens to that love? I've seen guys love coffee shop bitches. I've seen guys love, like, there were, there were bitches who bag grocery that have loving boyfriends. I've never seen a woman fall in love with a homeless man. Think about that. I've never seen a woman fall in love with a male bum. Never. It's impossible. They can't do it. Even if they say they can, even if they have the will to do it, biologically, the, the propagation of the species can't even happen with them even having that in them. Your mother, if it came down to the, the, you or her well, not 99.9% .9 of the time, 100% of the time, your mother's going to take herself, not you. No matter what they say, no matter how much they virtue signal to the public about a woman's sacrifice and a mother's sacrifice, it's all bullshit. Your mother is not sacrificing shit for you. Now, Yes, if she may, you know, buy materialistic things, if she has the money, and if she's done with all her shopping, you know, maybe, but just think about it. It, 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 it just can't happen. She probably loves a pair of shoes a lot more, but of course she won't say it. But honestly, women cannot love men. They can't afford to. And that's a hard eye opener. So what that means is, if when you come to this conclusion and you come to this truth, how can you ever be with a woman on a in a loving, compassionate, as a life partner? How can it ever happen knowing that this can never be reciprocated? Never. It's it's it, if she says it, if she acts like it, it's all an act. It's a clown show. It can't happen. Look at the child child abuse cases. The lion's share of all child abuse cases are committed by the biological mother. And these are supposed to be, you know, the ones that are the, the caregivers and supposed to put the children first and everything. It's all a bunch of shit. It's bullshit. The numbers don't add up. How are you the most caring person but lead the nation in child abuse? They pushed abortion terms up further. They, they, they keep kicking this thing up further because they know there's no limit. You know, these women, they will butcher and they'll kill their kids. How many news articles do you see where you see mothers not giving a shit, especially to their sons? All women are like that, including your fucking mother.
they're out for themselves. So how can you have a life partner with a person that is biologically wired to never love you? Does that make sense to you? How can you have a life partner with a person that's biologically wired to not love you? It's a fool's errand. And that has that that's number one. That has that's that that is my number one red pill that I had to swallow. Cause not only does that pretty much eliminates the way I look at the gender for dating purposes and personal reasons, but it also took effect on the way that I look at the females that are in my family, my mother, sisters grandmothers yes your grandmother too yes uh she's from a different time so a lot of these things don't really show up but trust me the only difference between females back then and females now is the hypergamous breaks off (laughs) that's it is the the hypergamy is unchecked right now your grandmother in her time they, they they kept her nature in check now Look around you. These bitches are disgusting. Look at the STD rates. They're really showing year by year how fucked up they are. Even when you you know you 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 try to say, okay, maybe I'm overreaching here. Maybe to, for me to put a broad paintbrush on all these women, maybe I'm overreaching. And a year goes by and it gets fucking worse they get worse and it's it's moved up to my number one spot that is the number one red pill toughest red pill that i had to swallow comment what are yours in the comment section as those you know continue to watch the video or see it you know let people know what were your you know red hardest red pills to swallow but those are my top five and um appreciate you guys for listening like the video comment and i'll get with you guys later take care